Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're gonna to talk about what are the common techniques that a pen tester, a penetration tester follows to try to get into a network or into an organization or into a system. So my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we are talking about pen tests pen testers, what is this, what do they do, and what are the techniques that a pen tester follows to be able to get into an organization, to get into a system, to get into a network. In short, a penetration tester is somebody who has been called in to a company to try to test the security of a network or a system or an application. Uh, they're actually essentially an ethical hacker, somebody who knows how to hack into a network and is essentially called in by that company to test the security. And then at the end, if they've been successful or you know partly successful, they will write a big report that is given to somebody in that organization who then is responsible for putting in security measures to stop real life hacking attempts from happening. So pen testers can really fall into two different types of categories. This is somebody who has uh, limited or no knowledge of the organization at all or the systems and they're essentially going in blind. So they maybe have been given a test, uh, a task to go in and test the integrity of a website. Uh, they don't know anything about the organization, they don't know the systems that are running. So they're sort of going in blind and have to figure out about that organization and about the systems as they go. Another sort of pen test is somebody that already may have some knowledge of the company or the systems. They may have been granted a little bit of access into the network and then they are, you know, go to town to try to get into the network even further. More often than none, an organization is going to approach a company or a pen tester to come in to do some penetration testing on their network. Uh, not everybody in the organization will know that a pen tester is there, only a small few. In some cases, maybe only one person will know that a pen tester is doing their thing. Uh, it obviously defeats the point of having a pen tester in the network if everybody in the IT space knows that they're gonna be there because then they're gonna go and try to stop those pen test, uh, you know, successful attempts from even happening. As well as that, you won't want to let everybody in the organization know because then they're gonna be on the lookout and may not uh, be as vulnerable to attack if they know there's somebody poking around in the network. So a pen tester's end goal is really to get into a system, to get into a network, to get into an application, either from outside or inside the organization. They wanna to want to get themselves elevated privileges and get themselves into areas that they shouldn't. Uh, and really the end goal is to infiltrate a system, to break a system, uh, to steal data, or at least simulate all of that uh, as if it was a real life hacking attempt. So in general, a pen tester that has been contracted to go in and infiltrate a system will follow a set of different phases, essentially five different tasks that they need to try to go through to be able to be successful in attempting a breach of an organization. Find out what the basic vulnerabilities are, find out what sort of network uh, map the, uh, the organization has, uh, what sort of servers they've got, what sort of networks they've got. Once they've scanned the network, they're gonna try to then get access. They're gonna gain access into the network. And then of course, they wanna exploit the system. They wanna either damage the system or at least imitate the damage of a system uh, or steal valuable data, steal intellectual property from that organization. So let's cover those five phases in a bit more depth. The first one is discovery. So as we mentioned, this is the hacker or the pen tester trying to get a bit of a better understanding of the, uh, the organization, get a better understanding of the uh, staff, how the business is structured, what does the business do, how big is the business, how many offices, do they have a national presence, do they have an international presence, what is the staff makeup. Really getting a good understanding of the, of the, of the organization is really the first step to try to get a bit of a better understanding of perhaps what the network inside that organization may look like. So one common way that you can start mapping this out or the way that a pen tester could map this out is to start using uh, social networking. Um, they're going to want to go into LinkedIn. It's very likely that a lot, if not most of these employees are going to have a profile on LinkedIn 
can go into LinkedIn, start getting an understanding of the different people within the organization, the titles, you know, what their job function is, and then moving into the IT space. Of course, you want to, uh, Pentester wants to get into the IT space and understand what the IT looks like. How many network engineers do they have? How many systems engineers? Do they have a security person? What sort of certifications, you know, industry standard IT certifications do they have? By having a map of what the IT looks like, you know what sort of tools you may want to use to combat that. After the initial discovery phase, you move into the scanning phase, where now you know a bit more about the organization and now you want to have a bit more of a targeted scanning effort against that organization. Find out what the basic vulnerabilities are, find out what sort of network uh, map the, uh, the organization has, uh, what sort of servers they've got, what sort of networks they've got, what sort of subnets they've got, they've got running, what software they've got running, what endpoint protection software they've got running from a security perspective, do they have firewalls, all of those sort of things. From the outside network, uh, do they have a website? Is that website secure? What sort of ports are open on that website? Is the IP open? Uh, are they using HTTPS? Uh, for secure or is it just using HTTP over port 80 or do they have RDP open, is VNC open, FTP open from the network, you know vulnerability checks, malware checks against a system on the website to see whether they're you know prone to malware, are there known vulnerabilities that are open and not patched on these particular systems. That's from an external point of view. From an internal point of view you also want to do some scanning, you want to now map out the network. What does the network look like? Look at some physical indicators around the building. Are they using Wi-Fi? Is the Wi-Fi visible on the network? Do they have a guest network? Is the standard Wi-Fi password, like does it ever get reset, for example? Uh, is it an easy password? Do you need AD authentication to get into that Wi-Fi? Is there a NAC, a network access control? You know, if I was if I was doing some pen testing, I would bring my own little computer in, uh, like a Raspberry Pi or something similar, running Kali Linux, plugging that into a network point. If I've got access, I've got a lot of tools that I can now use to go and uh, you know investigate, discover the network. Is the reception computer uh, always attended? Are there other computers that I can access that are unprotected? Are USB ports accessible? So can I just grab a normal USB port uh, and plug in a USB stick with some dodgy software on it? Can it install something or are they blocked? Just lay uh, USB sticks around, either outside the, uh, the office itself, um, outside the lifts, scatter some USB sticks within the office and see if somebody grabs those USB sticks and plugs them into the computer. You can also do an element of social engineering where you're imitating somebody from IT. Can you walk up to somebody in uh, in the office and say, hey, I'm from IT, I just need to install some software on your computer or I need to upgrade some software. Seeing how that user responds, if they just give you the, you know, the, uh, the, the access to their computer willingly, can you call up a user and say, hey, I'm from IT, we're doing some updates across our systems and we're you know, installing some new software on everybody's computers, I just need to get your username and password. And a lot of the time, they'll just give you the username and password. You could download and install some software on that computer to scan the network. Another thing that you also should do is if you've got access to a computer on their network, is to try to see what sort of software is running on that computer. Check the taskbar see what sort of endpoint protection software is running. Do they have antivirus running? Try to get a bit, a bit of a picture of the software that they've got running. Installing something like Wireshark on a computer, try to scan the, uh, I guess, the traffic, what sort of traffic is being broadcast across the network, what subnets are on the network, what sort of VLANs are in use, um, you know, what sort of MAC addresses are in use across the network. Obviously, MAC addresses generally are tied to particular, you know, to particular vendors, so you get a bit of a picture of what vendor, what hardware vendors are in use. So another element of building the uh, a network diagram or a, or a mapping of what the network looks like is to get a good understanding of AD. So you can go into the command prompt and type in some commands into the command prompt to try to uh, ping the domain controller to give you some information about the AD environment. So commands such as net user, net group can give you simple information around the OU structure, the user structure, the IT admins, the domain controllers, the domain admins, the enterprise admins. So you can get a bit of a better understanding map of what Active Directory looks like. Run a uh, group policy result, a GP result. Um, to get understanding of what group policies are applied to a PC. Next step is to try to gain access. So two common ways is you need to get a password. So you could either brute force a password, try to attempt 
to get a lot of passwords. We mentioned before around social engineering, we can get a user to give you a password as well. Uh, and you can just really just try to get in that way. But the end goal really is to get yourself elevated privileges. So even getting yourself a IT admin password is pretty good. Uh, a way that a lot of pen testers will do this is they will go into a end user's computer or once they've managed to get into a server, you know, however they've done that, uh, and then they will simulate a spike in CPU or make that computer run very, very slow. That user may then complain and say, look, I'm gonna call IT to come out to um, check my computer that is running poorly. In the meantime, because you got access to that computer first, you installed some software and the key logger or something that can track the passwords, an IT admin could now log into that computer and bam, you've now got access to the username and password for an IT admin with elevated privileges. Scanning the network for vulnerabilities. See what known vulnerabilities have been uh, not fixed. Um, if they're not you know, patching their fleet consistently, are there known vulnerabilities that can be easily exploited to get in? Scan for file server paths. Can you access C$? Can you access admin$? dollar? Can you just access standard file server paths and go through your file server structure? And NAS perhaps acting as a file server also. Do they have access into the domain controller? Can they force themselves in over a standard username, password, an IT admin password? a known vulnerability to get themselves elevated privileges or give themselves domain admin or enterprise admin rights. So even after they've tried all of this, if they still can't get into a system, into a server, into a user's computer, um, you know, sometimes the last case scenario is actually physically grabbing a computer, opening it up, taking the hard drive out so you can physically plug that into a USB uh, case or something and then get the data off that. So obviously, hopefully those hard drives are not encrypted uh, because then that is another way that you can get access to that data. Once you're in, staying invisible is the key. Reverting any changes that are made, uninstalling software that's been installed, essentially covering the tracks as, uh, as the pen testing is going on. You wanna remain quiet. So you want to be doing a lot of these things generally at a quiet space, perhaps in a computer that is uh, not uh, around a whole bunch of people, away from the IT department, doing it from a meeting room, doing it when everybody is out in a big meeting and the office is empty, doing it out of hours during the Christmas and New Year breaks where there are IT skeleton staff. A lot of organizations will do IT freezes where you know there's not many IT people around to uh, stop or detect uh, suspicious activity. And once they're in, they can go to town. Uh, they go in and they simulate a full on attack. They can take data out. And then really the end goal is to then provide a big report, have a meeting with the board, have a meeting with directors and let them know your findings so that they can then put a plan in place to rectify these issues and hopefully give you a big hefty you know, check at the end of the day for your good works and they'll hire you again in future for future pen tests. There you go, that is the steps that a pen tester will generally follow. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, I would love it if you commented below. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, also give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Digital Bike Computing for a whole bunch of more videos.